Okay, welcome to our discussion today on limiting reactants. Today we're going to be learning how to work with chemical equations when we know two starting masses. So, so far we've had, we've always been just dealing with, well, if we know reactant A, how much B do we need? How much C and D can we make? How much prox can we make? Today we're going to figure out how to work with if we know two reactants. Now, one of those reactants is likely to run out first. That's called the limiting reactant. Once that first, once that reactant runs out, the reaction's over, stop, done, no matter how much of the other stuff you have. All right, let's get to it. So we have copper metal and it's placed in a clear solution of silver nitrate. When you do that, the solution starts turning blue as copper 2 nitrate forms and this silvery metal pops out, which is silver. So over here, we can see that when we add our copper to our silver nitrate, we get copper nitrate, this is the blue one, plus silver metal, so it really is just solid silver on the bottom, um, or it forms on the edge of the copper, actually. So the question is, if you add 25.6 grams of copper to 13.2 grams of silver nitrate that's dissolved in water, so that's how we get the solution, the aqueous, how many grams of silver metal will you produce? All right. Well, it's possible that this amount of copper exactly uses up this amount of silver nitrate. But the likelihood, if you randomly just throw the two things together, that they perfectly use each other up is going to be pretty unusual. So we need to figure out a way to be able to handle this. So which of these runs out first, the copper or the silver nitrate? And then from that, how much stuff can we produce based on those numbers? All right. The big idea here is we're going to have to start with one of them. Either start with the copper or start with the silver nitrate. And then we're going to figure out how much of the other one we need to use the first one up. And then once we know how much we need, we compare it to how much we have. All right, let's get to it. So this is the same thing before. I just kind of got rid of the, the top part, gave me a little more space. To do a limiting reactant problem, it's a two-step approach. Step one, start with one of the reactants and figure out how much of the other one reactant you need. So in this case, let's start with copper. And we, we're going to say, okay, so we 25.6 grams of copper is what we have. The question now is, how much silver nitrate do we need to use up that copper? So it's just a stoichiometry problem now. So we start here with 25.6 grams of copper. And just to make things easier, I'm going to go ahead and record the molar masses above this. Um, so for copper, the molar mass in the periodic table is 63.55 grams for every mole. And silver nitrate, when you add up one silver, a nitrogen, and three oxygens, you get 169.91 grams for every mole. And notice that one mole has a much larger mass for silver nitrate, and that's because the silver atom, well, there's a whole bunch more atoms in there, but also the silver atom is really heavy. Now notice for the molar masses, I didn't include this two out in front. It's the mole, it's the mass of just one mole, not of two moles. I just care about that. All right, so now to do this next part, I need to cancel out my grams and get moles. So I need to convert from how heavy to how many. So I'm going to put the 169.91 grams of copper down. Oh, that's the wrong number. Sorry about that. So instead, I'm going to put the copper's molar mass down there. I apologize. 63.55 grams of copper divided by one mole of copper. And because I was keeping track of these subscripts, I knew I had the wrong thing because it's supposed to be grams of copper canceling grams of copper. So at this point, I know how many uh, moles of copper are in 25.6 grams. Now I need to figure out of course, how much silver nitrate I can make. So I know if I have this many moles of copper, for every one mole of copper, I need two moles of silver nitrate. So to cancel this mole of copper, the next mole of copper goes on bottom, mole of copper, and then moles of silver nitrate are going to go on top, Ag and O3. And there's two moles of silver nitrate for every one mole of copper. Again, moles of copper cancel out. So this tells me how many moles of silver nitrate I need in order to use up 25.6 grams of copper. So now I need to have something I can compare. Because I don't know how many moles of silver nitrate I have, I don't know how many grams I have. So i got to get to the point where I can compare it with this number. 
To do that, I need to use the molar mass. And because moles of silver nitrate is on top, I know the one mole of silver nitrate from the molar mass is going to go down here. And then the 169.91 grams goes up top. 69.91 grams of silver nitrate. Now notice the moles cancel. Whoops, moles cancel. And I'm left with this. I just got to do the math real quick. And again, 25.6. The next number's on bottom, so divided by 63.55. The next number's on top times 2 on top times 169.91 and that is equal to the fantastic answer of 137 grams of silver nitrate now I, I started with three digits here three significant figures so I end with three digits make sure that's all that you match that up when you're doing stoichiometry all right fantastically off awesome so this is this is what this number tells us is we need 137 grams of silver nitrate to use up 25.6 grams of copper. Now, so the question we have to ask ourselves is, do we have 137 grams? If we do have that or more, then we have plenty to use up the copper with. If we have less than this, then we don't have enough silver nitrate. And sure enough, we only have 13.2 grams. That means we don't have enough silver nitrate. That means it's going to run out. So down here, I'm going to explain that real quick. So since we only have 13.2 grams of silver nitrate, and we need... 137 grams the silver nitrate will run out before the copper this means that silver nitrate is our limiting reactant Now that was step number two. So step number one was just doing the stoichiometry, going from one of the reactants you know to the other one you know, and then you compare the what you need number to what you have. And then you have to reason it out for yourself. I don't know any simple rules for it. So if what you need is more than what you have, then this one, the silver nitrate limiting reactant. If we had 150 grams of silver nitrate and we only need 137, well, gosh, that means we have more than what we need, so then the copper would run out first. We'd use up all the copper, then have some excess left over of silver nitrate. So now, here's another key idea. Once you know your limiting reactant, you must only use the limiting reactant from that point forward. So this 25.6 grams of copper, it is junk to us now. We don't care about it. We will never use that much copper up because we're going to run out of silver nitrate after using 13.2 grams. And that's going to use some amount of copper, but it's not going to be this much. So when we ask to do other problems with stoichiometry problems with it, we won't ever start with a 25.6 grams number. We're going to start with 13.2 grams. And we'll have to actually at some point figure out how much copper we're going to need. All right, so that's the big idea was uh, determining what's the with, uh, reactant is, is the... Uh, limiting reactant. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to actually answer this part of the question. How many grams of silver metal would you produce? Now, we know this is not a number we start with. We're not going to ever use this much copper up. We are going to use up all of this silver nitrate because it's our limiting reactant. So we're going to start here with 13.2 grams of silver nitrate, and we want to go over to here and go to silver metal and figure out how much that is. So this, at this point, is just a limiting reactant, or sorry, a stoichiometry problem. We've gotten rid of this one as being not the limiting reactant, the excess reactant, so we're not going to use that number. So we're going to start here. 13.2 grams of silver. Ooh, that's totally wrong. Silver nitrate over one. And again, we need to convert this how heavy number into how many. So we're going to do our silver nitrate number of 169.91 grams, AgNO3 over one mole of AgNO3. Now, the grams cancel. 
And what this number tells us is how many moles of silver nitrate are in 13.2 grams. And we know from our balanced chemical equation that for every two moles of silver nitrate, we make two moles of silver. So I'm going to put on the bottom, because silver nitrate is on top here, I'm going to put two moles of silver nitrate on bottom. And I'm going to put two moles of silver on top. Now what this number tells me, if we stop and do the math right now, this would tell us how many moles of silver we could produce if we used all 13.2 grams of silver nitrate up. Now we need to get something that's measurable, so we can't measure moles in the lab, but we can measure grams. So we're going to convert this silver number into grams. And we're going to use the periodic table, the molar mass in the periodic table. And because, whoops, let me cancel moles of silver nitrate out. Because moles of silver on top here, I know the mole of silver has to go on bottom. And that's one mole of silver, and the mass of one mole of silver is 107.9 grams of silver. Moles of silver cancel, moles of silver cancel. In the end, I gotta do the math. So again, we start with 13.2. The next number's on bottom, so we do divided by 169.9. The next one's on top, but notice there's a two on top and on bottom. I can just cancel those out. Or I could do times two divided by two, doesn't matter. And then the last thing we do is just, because it's on top, 107.9 times that. And I get here for an answer 8.38 grams of silver. And now we should make sure that number makes sense. So if I start with 13.2 and I break off the nitrogen and oxygen, I should have less mass than that of silver left over. And sure enough, I only have 8.38 grams because over here I'm missing the NO3 thing. So that's good, that makes sense. So this number is probably reasonable. All right, so that is our answer. This is the 8.38 grams. So you can make 8.38 grams of silver if you use up all 13.2 grams of copper. Awesome. One last thing to take a look at before we, before we leave this topic. So oftentimes you also want to know how much of the excess we have. So how much leftover stuff will we have? In this case, copper is our excess reactant. It's the one that's left over. We're going to now figure out how much copper is left over. So we know that we started with the copper here was 25.6 grams of copper. And we know the silver nitrate is 13.2 grams, and this is our limiting reactant. So again, we never start with this number in stoichiometry because we're not going to actually use up that copper. We are going to use up all the 13.2 grams of silver nitrate. So in this case, what we'll do is we'll start with our 13.2 grams. We'll go backwards and figure out how much copper we need in order to use up all 13.2, and then we'll compare the number what we need to what we have to figure out how much is left over. All right, that, that might be confusing. Let's get after it. Um, we do need the balanced equation still, which I didn't put on here. All right, so we have our balanced equation now. So now we're going to just go from silver nitrate. We know we have 13.2 grams. Now we're going to come over here to copper and say, how much copper do we need to, to, to if we used all that up? So 13.2 grams of silver nitrate over 1. And we know grams going on bottom, and silver nitrate has a mass of 169.91 grams for one mole of silver nitrate. And the grams of silver nitrate cancel the grams of silver nitrate. This tells me how many moles of silver nitrate are in 13.2 grams. And now I need, I know for every two moles of silver nitrates, I get one mole of copper. So I know to put the silver nitrate on bottom because it's on top here. So I get two moles of silver nitrate to one mole of copper, because it's a one up here. Now all of this number so far tells me how many moles of copper I need in order to use up 13.2 grams of silver nitrate. So my last step is to get some mass number because I need to be able to measure it and compare it. Oops, cancel silver nitrates. So the last thing I do is I'm gonna say, okay, so one mole of copper, and the moles on top, so it's gotta be on bottom here, is 
has a mass of 63.55 grams of copper. Mole of copper with mole of copper. And then what that ends up equaling in the end, we've got to figure out. So 13.2. The next number is on bottom here. So we're going to do divided by 169.91. The next number is on bottom. So we're going to do divided by 2. Next number is on top. So we do times 63.55. And we end up with a number of 2.47, 2.47 grams. So in order to use up, let me write this down, to use up all 13.2 grams of silver nitrate, you need 2.47 grams of copper. All right, so if you need 2.47 grams and you have 25.6, then the excess reactant is equal to 25.6, what you have, grams of copper, minus 2.47 grams of copper. And that gives us 25.6 minus 2.47 23.1, so about 23.1 grams of copper left over. So in the bottom of this container, once this whole reaction is done, you're going to have a chunk of copper. If you pull it out and find and measure its mass, you're going to have 23.1 grams left over. Oops. All right, so that's the, that's the in and out of limiting reactants, some of the big things. If you needed to also find how much copper nitrate you made, you would just use stoichiometry, but remember, you got to start with this 13.2 numbers. All right, good job today, my friends. I hope that helped, and we'll see you later.